L. Kuyper Jr. has been covering the NFL Draft for far longer than I have been alive. Since 1984, he has shared news and stated his opinion on the top NFL prospects and the best available player ready to save a NFL team. You see his face on draft night and in the days, weeks, and months leading up to the NFL Draft. His big board spells out who will go where in the first round. Typically, someone who has done something for so long would be very good at their craft and have earned the term expert. However, it has been proven again and again that Mel Kuyper is far from an NFL draft expert. Not only has Kuyper been widely criticized by NFL fans, but also NFL front office representatives due to his mistakes and also because of something you would think would have been a prerequisite to his job, his lack of and substantial experience of any level in football, professional, or even amateur. So what's going on guys, your boy Mike here, and today we are going to be looking at some of Mel Mel Kuyper's worst calls during the NFL Draft and focus only on his worst analysis, especially when it comes to quarterbacks. Before we get to the content, just do me a favor. The NFL doesn't really like the fact that I make you guys content. They've been hitting me with limited demonetization claims and copyright claims. And in order to fight back the evil NFL and continue this push where I make you guys content, do me one favor and sack the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It takes a second and it keeps our channel afloat in the YouTube. YouTube algorithm. Otherwise, there might be a chance that you might not see my next video on your home screen. Now that we got all that out of the way, break! Mel Kuyper's big board of draft picks has been around for more than 35 years, but recently, well, even longer than recently, it has been losing accountability. The order is incorrect far more than it is correct, and in the last NFL draft, Mel Kuyper, the so-called expert of the NFL draft, had 20 consecutive incorrect picks in his list. Most people think if they make a few mistakes over and over, they lose their job, but not Mel. He keeps on showing up in articles on ESPN, and of course, right there in the limelight on Trump. Draft night. First, let's take a look at who Kuiper is behind those glasses and under that helmet head of hair that, like his disposition, hasn't changed in, well, almost 40 years. Mel Kuiper in the 1970s was a teenager fresh off of never touching a football, but was very interested in America's game and specifically college prospects in the NFL draft. Kuiper immersed himself in the information of the NFL, specifically his hometown Baltimore Colts, and started developing his own draft cards, trying to hop them to whoever would read them. Growing up in Baltimore, he never lacked an ounce of confidence and immediately aimed high by approaching Baltimore Colts executive Ernie Accorsi with his suggestions. You might be wondering who Ernie Accorsi is. Well, Ernie Accorsi was the general manager behind two quarterbacks that were presumptive number one overall picks and transcendent talents refusing to play for him. First being John Elway refusing to play for the Baltimore Colts and almost more than 20 years later, Eli Manning refusing to play for the San Diego Chargers. Now, of course, he, instead of looking at Mel Kuyper's cards, would just straight up take them and throw them in the trash. This gave Mel Kuyper a business idea. Try to sell your draft reports to fans. Kuyper took that idea and began his own NFL talent evaluating business in 1981, which he named Kuyper Enterprises. And in his own home, he started as a young entrepreneur, all while he took classes at Essex Community College in Baltimore. Although we don't know for sure, let's just assume that he played some intramural flag football just to give the guy some kind of football experience. But he probably did more studying, business planning, and watching ESPN, which was at the time a two-year-old sports station back then. Most of the time was spent in his business producing a draft preview in October, newsletters in November, December, and January, a free agency data sheet in February, and his annual draft book with scouting reports in March, a draft update in early April, and a draft review after the event. Since this was way before the time of the internet, Kuiper obtained his information 
organization by calling long distance to sports writers, college football coaches, and whoever would talk to him. Still living at home, Kuiper amassed long distance phone bills as back then you were charged for every minute on a call. Thus, his dad installed a huge satellite dish at their home so he could gather all of his information in a more economically friendly way. After the 1982 season, Kuiper heard from Accorsi again, and probably because Kuiper wouldn't leave him alone. He offered Mel a front office position with the Colts, which was a lowly job, but still a job in the NFL. We all would know that the Colts would eventually move to Indianapolis shortly following Kuiper joining their staff and either they didn't take Kuiper with them or Kuiper didn't want to leave his sweet digs of home sweet home. The stars finally aligned for Kuiper in 1984 and he joined the ESPN coverage of the NFL draft and was officially coined an analyst. Although his first paycheck from ESPN for the coverage of the NFL draft was only $400, he has been with ESPN ever since. Kuiper joined the draft crew right before the NFL draft became the giant broadcasted event that it is today. In the early 80s, it was covered by the media more like the owners meetings are covered today. Within five years, Kuiper married his wife Kim, who started running the day-to-day -day operations of Kuiper Enterprises, and Kim has been running the subscription service of Kuiper's draft analysis and other operations out of their home since Kuiper started his gig on ESPN. Seven TVs in their modest home in the 1980s turned into a 6,500 square foot home with dozens of televisions and a personal radio and a TV studio. Mel started off strong in determining quarterbacks that might be misses in the NFL. NFL and should be drafted towards the bottom of the order. Famously, in the 1990 NFL draft, Mel Kuyper would rate Jeff George, a quarterback out of Illinois, as the 84th best player in the NFL draft. However, George was still selected number one overall by Indianapolis, but it turned out Mel was correct on not placing him anywhere near the top quarterbacks available, as Jeff George didn't become anything other than a trivia question answer. Of course, we haven't ever heard of Jeff George's name in NFL record books, or have even even seen any old highlight reels as he went 46 and 78 as a starter in 12 seasons in the league with five different teams. He had only a 1 to 2 playoff record, proving that this time Kuiper was right about a quarterback. And if my editor happens to have found any footage of Jeff George, show him some love in the comment section down below. But also in 1990, although he was correct on what quarterbacks would be misses, Kuiper had one big slip up, big time when he penned Houston quarterback Andre Ware as the next great NFL quarterback. Ware, a Heisman Trophy winner, was chosen number seven overall by the Detroit Lions, but retired after only six career NFL starts and within three years was in the Canadian Football League. Looking back at the 1991 draft, Kuiper had Dan McGuire and Brett Favre rated at the same level heading into that draft where prospects were still called on their home landlines. Favre was taken in the second round, thus had to hang out in the bedroom waiting around all while Dan McGuire was taken number 16 overall. Dan McGuire is now more famously known as Mark McGuire of Major League Baseball's brother rather than as a NFL quarterback. And we all know who Brett Favre is. Dan only made five NFL starts as for Favre, he has a Super Bowl ring, numerous NFL records, and a sharp looking gold jacket. In the 1993 NFL draft, Rick Meyer, the Notre Dame quarterback, was rated by Kuiper as the 30th best available player. He was picked by Seattle number two overall and put up despicable numbers, going 24 and 44 as a starter and had 76 interceptions with only 50 touchdowns with five different teams over eight NFL seasons. Looks like that is a time a team should have listened to Mel. However, it didn't take long before Kuiper's ratings were surrounded by controversy and his legitimacy came into question by NFL front office types. In the 1994 NFL draft, Kuiper harshly criticized the Indianapolis Colts for passing on quarterback Trent Dilfer and not choosing him with their first round pick. The vice president of the Colts, Bill Tobin, said out loud that Kuiper had no more credibility than his next door neighbor and gave a quote that is still used today, saying, who the hell is Mel Kuiper? In 1998, Mel Kuiper, looking more like Dracula than a draft expert, called the Packers drafting Matt Hasselbeck in the sixth round a waste of the pick. Turns out Hasselbeck's career wasn't a waste by any means. Also in 1998, that was the fateful draft in which there were many arguments between analysts on whether Peyton Manning or Ryan Leaf should be drafted number one overall. Mel Kuyper did say that Manning was a better choice for number one, but Kuyper also stuck his foot in his mouth when he was quoted talking about Leaf's character. Kuyper said that his attitude will be an asset in the NFL and gave him a mental advantage over other players in his draft class. 
Kuiper added, I think Ryan Leaf is more mature than Drew Bledsoe when he was drafted. He's very much a grown up 21 year old. Leaf is known now as the biggest draft bust ever. He had numerous behavioral issues, including yelling at a reporter in the locker room after a horrific game. He compiled a four and 17 starting record and was out of the league after four abysmal seasons and even spent time in prison. Kuiper should really add Drew Bledsoe to his list of people to apologize to. Skipping to more present day NFL draft times, many have questioned Mel Kuyper's credibility, not only to the fact that he spent very little time in the actual operations of a professional football team and no time on the field, but also due to his close relationship with a plethora of NFL agents. Some have pegged that Mel Kuyper overhypes the clients of his friends. Perhaps maybe he is conducting a side hustle by getting a handout for promoting certain individuals. I know there has been many NFL drafts where I haven't heard of a specific prospect until two months before the NFL draft and they turn out to be absolute duds. I'm looking at you, Mitchell Trubisky. In 2002, Kuyper missed on two quarterbacks, David Carr, who was drafted as the number one overall pick by the Houston Texans, and Joey Harrington, who was selected number three three overall by the Detroit Lions. Kuiper was high on both. Both of those quarterbacks did not fare well once joining NFL teams and spent most of their time on the sidelines with their helmet off, but Kuiper was in love with them both, saying, I think when you look at Carr and Harrington three or four years down the road, you're not going to call any one of these players a bust or a disappointment. In 2007, Kuiper made a bold prediction that LSU quarterback Jamarcus Russell could be the next John Elway, saying that three years from now, you could certainly be looking at one of the elite top five NFL quarterbacks. Look out because the skill level he has is certainly John Elway-like. The Raiders must have been listening to Mel as Oakland selected Jamarcus Russell with the first overall pick that year, and he did not pan out at all as he went on to a 7-18 record in only three seasons and had 38 turnovers versus 18 touchdowns while completing only 52% of his passes. Also in that 2007 NFL draft, Mel Kuyper was very high on Brady Quinn. Quinn is a remarkably nice guy and was a great quarterback at Notre Dame, but he does a better job in his current career of television sports analyst and radio host than he did as an effective NFL quarterback. However, Mel Kuyper in 2007 was all in that Quinn should have been the Detroit Lions number two overall pick. Thankfully, the Lions had muted the TV when Kuyper was blabbering as they went with selecting Calvin Johnson, you know, Megatron, who definitely was a much better decision for Detroit than Brady Quinn. Quinn was drafted number 22 overall to Cleveland, adding to the Browns woes of a another failed signal caller in Cleveland. Quinn bounced around the NFL, was even named a starter for an awful Kansas City Chiefs team midway through the 2012 season, and perhaps he could have been better if injuries didn't get the best of him throughout his seven-year journeyman career. The overhyping of certain players theory came to substance when Kuiper, over and over again, pegged Jimmy Clausen of Notre Dame as a top five talent prior to the 2010 NFL draft. Kuiper was so confident about Clausen going high and succeeding that he made a retirement Hireman promise on air during a NFL Live segment, stating that if Jimmy Clausen is not a successful quarterback in the NFL, I'm done. That's it. I'm out. Todd McShay would respond, what is your time frame, Mel? When do we make up that assessment? Kuiper says, I want eight years. And McShay said, it will only take three years, Mel. We can tell inside three years. Kuiper said he wanted eight. At that point, and with Kuiper botching draft predictions for 10 years already, by 2010, most NFL scouting staffs had let what Kuiper says go in one ear and out the other. Clausen dropped to the Carolina Panthers, who had the 48th overall pick. He was so terrible that the Carolina Panthers found themselves picking number one overall the year after. Clausen would do absolutely nothing in the NFL, start only 14 games for three different teams, and would retire by 2015. Mel Kuyper had Jimmy Clausen as his fourth best player in the 2010 NFL Draft. Due to that bet, remember that he made on live TV, Kuyper should have announced his retirement in 2018 team, but as we know, he is still on air and is probably getting a nice salary from ESPN and who knows what other flows of income. Ricky Stanzi is another great guy and the quarterback out of Iowa was even compared to Tom Brady prior to the 2011 draft. After the draft, while recapping the picks and asking who would have the best career out of all the quarterbacks taken in that class, Kuiper said it would be Ricky Stanzi. Cam Newton and Andy Dalton were also in that draft class. Kuiper said that Stanzi would become a backup in Kansas City for a couple of years, and then just like Aaron Rodgers, become a starter and thrive. 
Stanzi never saw action in a game that mattered, and as of 2015, he wasn't in the league anymore. Cam Newton and Andy Dalton, although now at the end of their road, had a lot more longer and more meaningful careers than Ricky. Russell Wilson was an undersized quarterback out of Wisconsin in 2012, and Mel Kuyper had strong doubts about his ability to succeed as a starter. He didn't have any faith in his longevity and didn't have him projected anywhere near the top of the draft order. In that 2012 draft, analysts, including Kuyper, were drooling over Andrew Luck and Robert Griffin III, naming them as the next legendary quarterbacks in the NFL, and no one was saying anything about Russell Wilson. Granted, Russell Wilson wasn't drafted in a top position, and he lasted until mid midway through the third round, selected by the team that he has been legendary with for the past eight seasons, the Seattle Seahawks. Mel Kuyper basically said that Russell Wilson would be a good pick to serve as a backup coming off of the bench. He said regarding Wilson, he's a Seneca Wallace type. I think he goes in that fourth round area and has a serviceable NFL career. Seneca Wallace was a fill-in for Matt Hasselbeck when he injured his knee in 2006, went 2-2, two and two, reached 1,000 yards, and in 2008 was a fill-in for a few games, and then like a ton of others began the cycle of signed, released, signed, released while not quite reaching 5,000 passing yards on an 80 quarterback rating. Mel Kuyper's Russell Wilson comparison to Seneca Wallace would be the only time Russell Wilson would be compared to a backup as Wilson is on the yellow brick road paid for Canton with not only a Super Bowl ring and eight Pro Bowl appearances, but many career highlights including a season as the NFL passing rating leader, passing touchdown leader, crushing all the Seahawks quarterback records, has well over 30,000 career passing yards already, and over 4,000 yards tallied up just this season alone. In 2014, Kuyper again said that the number one overall pick of the NFL draft should be Johnny Manziel, who turned out to be a bust. He projected him as the best available quarterback and suggested that the Houston Texans should take him number one overall. Kuyper also compared Johnny Manziel to Frank Tarkenton. Thankfully for the Texans, they didn't choose Manziel. He went in the 22nd spot overall and only spent two seasons in Cleveland when his off-the-field hobbies caused him to be out of the NFL completely. Tarkenton was probably offended of the comparison to young Manziel as Tarkenton was a nine-time Pro Bowler and won the NFL MVP award in 1975 while playing in the league for 18 seasons. Mel Kuyper should have probably retired in 2018, as in the 2020 draft, as it has been one of his worst so far. He started off hot going two and two, calling the Bengals drafting Joe Burrow number one, and my grandma could have called that one. Then he was correct in Washington selecting Ohio State defensive end Chase Young, and then Kuyper correctly predicted four out of the first six picks, then struck out terribly, with only one additional correct first round selection. Going over 21 at one point in the first round was far worse than the 16 incorrect picks in a row that he had in 2009. His 21 incorrect picks in a row in the odd 2020 draft made him look foolish, especially when there were dozens of other closer projections from those not getting paid six-figure salaries. <clears throat> However, 2020 for Mel was still better than 2017 when he went two of 13 in picks and was incorrect on the final 25 picks. See, I told you he really should have retired in 2018. Maybe this year will be different for Mel Kuyper in the NFL draft. I don't know. What do you think about Mel Kuyper? Do you take his takes seriously or do you listen to someone else? And if you do listen to someone else, do you subscribe to him and turn on their notifications? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.